Hello again, I'm Mike McDonald and welcome to the channel. We have uh, another question that uh, we would like to try to answer and that is what is referred to in theology as a dispensation. This is uh, quite a long study so I'll just give you a very brief introduction to that. Just to begin with, I would like to note that until you understand what a dispensation is, you have a very, very difficult time understanding the New Testament or the Old Testament, in particular, the Gospels. So a dispensation is a period of time, a period of human history, defined in terms of divine revelation. What that means is that they can be all different amounts of time, but those times start and stop depending on the amount of divine revelation and how it is delivered. The word itself comes from the Greek word okonomia, uh, O-I-K-O-N-O-M-I-A, okonomia. About four centuries before the New Testament was written, it was used to mean a household administration or referring to a steward in charge of a household. It came to mean, mean reference to the authority of parents over children and the policy and provisions of those parents to those children. At the time of the writing of the New Testament, this same word, oikonomia, had come to mean the management of a household or the administration of a business. The word itself implies a plan, an arrangement, opposite from chaos or no plan. It does not in itself denote time. However, the King James Version translates this ancient word as a dispensation, a term that legitimately has come to connote a period of time. Always a period of time identified by divine revelation. It describes divine administration during a distinct historical era. Thus, Administration becomes an important issue in distinguishing one dispensation from another. At decisive points in human history, <clears throat> in his overall plan for mankind, God institutes changes. Okay, God never changes, but his revelation to humanity increases Therefore, it seems to change. He institutes changes in his delegated authority, in his responsibility that he wants people to have, in the procedures he wants them to follow, and in the available assets that he uh, makes available for believers. These changes involve first one group of people and then another group of people. With each change, there is added divine revelation of God's plan always for post-salvation livelihood, post-salvation way of life. The way of salvation from eternal condemnation never changes in any dispensation. It is always believe God. However, God gives us and has given us different, inf different amounts of information as to what we are to believe. Adam believed God, and that belief was that he was going to supply an adequate sacrifice. Adam did not know what that sacrifice was going to be. He did not know the name of that person was going to be Jesus Christ. All he knew was that God said it, and he believed God and God credited to him absolute righteousness as a result of that. He credited to Adam his righteousness. That does not mean Adam was as righteous as God is. That means that 
God credited him with that righteousness. Different theologians and Bible students come up with different time periods and different amounts of time periods depending on how they read Scripture. That is not as important as understanding that there are different time periods. I will give to you the ones that I most agree with. So, starting with Adam and going to Moses and the Exodus, we have what is known as the dispensation of the Gentiles. During that time, God revealed himself to the patriarchs of the family. It was up to the patriarchs of the family to disseminate the information they received from God to the rest of the family. God did not communicate with the rest of the family. We understand this when we're reading Job, and Job performs a animal blood sacrifice for his children who are not even present at the time. After the dispensation of the Gentiles, the head of the family could not do that. But it was perfectly legitimate during that time. So, ending with the Exodus. So, from the Exodus until the birth of Christ, we have the dispensation of Israel. So, during this time, God communicated directly with Israel at a Later point in this dispensation, we set, God set up a priest society in the nation Israel, and he communicated with the priests in that, and the law that was set up so that it would be disseminated to the rest of the nation, and the nation was responsible for getting that information out to other nations. After so we have from the birth of Christ, that's from his virgin birth, until the ascension of Christ and Pentecost, which followed 50 days after that, we have the dispensation of the hypostatic union or the dispensation of Christ, the incarnation. Hypostatic union is just a theological word that refers to the two essences that Christ had, the essence of God and the essence of humanity both the God-man. So from Pentecost until the rapture of the church, that, and the church uh, makes reference to every human being who has lived as a believer during the time period from Pentecost until the rapture, which and that, of course, is in the future, uh, that all of those individual believers make up the church. So from Pentecost until the rapture, we have another dispensation, and that is referred to in Scripture as the dispensation of the church. During that time, God disseminates information to believers through His Word, through, through the completed Word of God we know as the Bible. After the rapture of the church, so from the rapture of the church until the second advent of Christ is known as the uh, dispensation of the tribulation. That's going to be a, a little less than seven years. We have information in reference to that. That's also future. Uh, and there will be much added revelation from what we have right now. The people will be able to do miracles, there will be signs and miracles, there will be uh, evangelism from angels, there will be evangelism from uh, protected people. Uh, it will be a time of much additional revelation from God, but it will also be a time of great tragedy. So after, at the end of the tribulation, is the second coming of Christ. This so we have from the uh, uh, the second advent of Christ, which ends the tribulation. We have from the second advent of Christ until the last judgment. This is known as the dispensation of the millennium. We, we know from the name that that's going to be about a thousand years. 